Ever had your engine cut out like it suddenly forgot how to start your car? Maybe it starts rough, idles like a washing machine full of bricks, or just feels off? Here's the thing, your fuel pump or spark plugs might be innocent. The true troublemaker, a sneaky little part called the crankshaft position sensor. In this video, we're going full detective mode, showing you how to diagnose and fix this unassuming sensor is one of the most important pieces in your engine's orchestra. When it breaks down, your vehicle's performance can spiral into chaos. So today, we're breaking down everything, what it does, the warning signs, how to test it, and the easiest way to fix it. Let's dive in. One why the crankshaft position sensor matters. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's get one thing straight. This sensor isn't just there for decoration. It's your engine's timekeeper. It monitors the position and speed of the crankshaft, the rotating shaft that converts the up and down motion of pistons into the spin that drives your wheels. Your engine's computer uses that data to make smart decisions like when to inject fuel and fire spark plugs. If the sensor feeds bad data, or worse, no data at all, you're looking at timing chaos. That means everything from misfires to stall to your engine not even starting. It's like trying to bake a cake without a timer. Sure, you might guess right a few times, but eventually something's gonna burn. Or worse, stay raw in the middle. And here's the real kicker. Most people don't even suspect the crankshaft sensor when things start going wrong. They'll replace coils, clean injectors, even swap the battery, wasting time and money when all along it's this tiny, often forgotten part silently causing mayhem. So if you're chasing gremlins in your engine, this could be the one part that brings peace back under your hood. 2. Let's talk crankshaft time to zoom out. What exactly is this crankshaft we're so obsessed with? It's a key player in turning combustion into movement. Inside your engine, pistons move vertically, powered by the combustion of fuel, but your wheels rotate. The crankshaft bridges this difference by transforming the piston's motion into rotational energy. Without it, your car's power would have nowhere to go. So naturally, it makes sense that the sensor monitoring this spinning beast has to be spot on. The crankshaft sensor is like the vehicle's inner eye constantly reporting what's happening deep inside the engine to ensure everything stays perfectly timed. Imagine trying to DJ a party without hearing the beat. That's what your engine is doing without accurate crankshaft data, dancing wildly off rhythm, burning fuel at the wrong moments, and causing chaos under the hood. And because it's all happening internally, you won't see the drama, just feel the rough idling, poor acceleration, or even a mysterious shutdown. That's why this part isn't just technical, it's critical. If the crankshaft is the heart of the engine, this sensor is its pulse monitor. 3. Warning signs? Is your sensor dying? Time to play mechanic. These are the biggest red flags that your crankshaft position sensor is failing. Spot any of these and it's time for action. Funky exhaust smells. You catch a whiff of something odd, like gasoline or rotten eggs. That's your engine crying out. A bad crank sensor throws off fuel combustion timing. Result? Raw fuel gets dumped straight into your exhaust, leading to some very unpleasant odors. Fuel efficiency tanks. If your car suddenly starts guzzling gas like it's training for a marathon, the sensor could be to blame. With bad data, your engine runs inefficiently, burning more fuel than needed. It's like doing cardio in a pool of molasses. You're using energy but getting nowhere fast. Rough idling. Ever feel your car shudder like it's having a bad dream while idling? That's a classic symptom. The air-fuel mix is all wrong because the engine's getting bad timing info. What should be a gentle hum turns into a shaky mess. Engine misfires. Misfires are another big clue. If your car jerks or hesitates as you drive, it could be because the spark plugs aren't firing at the right time. And that all goes back to the crankshaft sensor feeding bad data to your ECU. Sluggish acceleration hit the gas, and your car acts like it just woke up from a nap. If acceleration is delayed or weak, the engine might not be getting the right cues to deliver power when you need it. Timing is everything, and a faulty sensor can totally throw that off. Hard or erratic? Starts your car taking longer to start, or sometimes it won't start at all. The crank sensor could be giving the ECU nothing to work with. No signal, no ignition. It's like trying to make a phone call with zero bars. You're not getting through. Random stalling. This one's both dangerous and annoying. If your engine suddenly shuts off while you're driving or idling, the sensor could be cutting out. It's like someone yanking the power cord on your computer mid-zoom call. Not fun. Check engine light. 
That dreaded little orange icon might pop up when the sensor starts failing. Your car's ECU knows something is off and wants you to investigate. Ignoring it is basically inviting bigger problems. RPMs all over the place. Notice your RPM needle jumping around for no reason. The sensor could be sending erratic signals. RPM should be stable, especially on flat roads. If not, your sensor might be ready for retirement. 4. Diagnosing the problem. Here's where we roll up our sleeves. Time to see if the crankshaft sensor is really the villain. To begin, you'll need a basic multimeter, or if you're more advanced, an oscilloscope. With a multimeter, you can test resistance and voltage. For a two-wire sensor, disconnect it and measure resistance across the terminals. You should get a reading between 200 and 1200 ohms. Then check the AC voltage while cranking the engine. You're looking for something in the 0.2 volts to 2 volts range. For a 3-wire Hall Effect sensor, first check for a 5-volt or 12-volt power supply, then look for a square wave signal when cranking. If you see no fluctuation or just a flat line, your sensor's toast. Now, don't get overwhelmed. This may sound like something out of a mechanics textbook, but even a beginner with steady hands and a little patience can nail this test. The beauty of DIY diagnosis is that it keeps you in control. You're not just swapping out parts blindly. You're making informed moves. And in a world where labor costs and part prices keep climbing, that kind of knowledge pays off big time. It's you versus the gremlins, and now you're armed to win. 5. Where is this thing hiding? Sensor found. Great. Now comes the scavenger hunt. The crankshaft position sensor isn't going to wave at you from under the hood. It's usually tucked away like it's trying to avoid work. Where it lives depends heavily on your car's make and model, but there are a few usual suspects. Near the crankshaft pulley, attached to the engine block, around the bell housing of the transmission, near the flywheel, or close to the timing belt or chain. If you're scratching your head, crack open the owner's manual, or fire up a quick Google search with your car's make and model. Still can't spot it? This is when a good flashlight and one of those handy mirror on a stick tools become your new best friends. Be patient. Finding the sensor is half the battle. It's often covered in grime, hidden behind components, or buried in awkward corners. But locating it yourself gives you a serious edge. You're not just learning where your sensor is. You're learning your car. And the more you know about it, the less chance you'll get played at the shop. 6. Let's replace that sensor. Got the new sensor? Here's how you swap it in. Step 1. Disconnect the battery safety first. Always start by disconnecting the negative battery terminal. Step 2. Locate the sensor. Now that you know where it lives, get access. You might need to remove a plastic engine cover or move some wires aside. Step 3. Remove the old sensor. It's usually held in by one bolt. Unscrew it and gently pull the sensor out. If it resists, don't yank. Wiggle it loose. Step 4. Clean the area. Wipe down the sensor socket area. You don't want grime getting in when you install the new one. Step 5. Install the new sensor, slide it into place, and tighten the bolt. Don't over tighten. You're securing a sensor, not welding a door shut. Step 6. Reconnect the battery. Almost done. Hook up that battery terminal again. Step 7. Start the car and smile fire it up. You should notice a smoother idle, better response, and no more mystery symptoms. The sensor fix is complete. Bonus tips. Don't buy the cheapest sensor you can find. OEM or high quality aftermarket ones are worth the extra bucks. If your car doesn't start even after replacing the sensor, double check the wiring and connector. Sometimes the issue isn't the sensor, but the harness. Clear the codes using an OBD2 scanner if your check engine light is still on. There you have it, a complete rundown of how to diagnose and fix your crankshaft position sensor in just 18 minutes. From misfires to stalls, this tiny part has the power to ruin your drive or restore it completely. Now we want to hear from you. Have you ever had your engine go haywire because of this sneaky little sensor? Or maybe you've already replaced it and noticed a big difference? Drop your experience in the comments. Let's get a conversation going. You might help someone else who's scratching their head over a weird engine issue. And hey, if you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. We've got plenty more hands-on no fluff car repair guides coming your way. Stay tuned, stay wrenching, and drive safe.